Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, I'm Tony and this is TC's Outdoors. So today's the day. Uh, we're going to pour some concrete. I got, I was going to do it yesterday. I got rained out, so uh, I ended up pushing the, the rental back for a day, which is kind of a crunch because I have to work tomorrow. So hopefully I can get it finished up and get this thing returned before uh, they close. But it's, uh, it was eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Uh, it's nine cubic foot, so I can do um, I've got 60 pound bags, which that's like a half a cubic foot, so I could do 18 bags at a time if I really wanted to push it, but I don't think I'm going to, not knowing really what I'm doing. So uh, I think I'll start up with like six bags and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I already read the instructions, I need like three quarters of a gallon of water per bag. So um, I spent the last couple days, well, weeks really, going to uh, YouTube University, uh, the concrete division. and. I think I've got a pretty good grasp on it. There's a lot of good videos out there, a lot of good content to kind of walk you through the basics of it anyhow. Um, this is just going to be a woodshed, you know, so it's not really critical if the finish is perfect or uh, as long as it's solid and it doesn't crumble is pretty much my goal. So uh, I'm pouring it five inches thick. I don't know if you guys saw the short or not or even the prep. I'll throw a video up for the prep or the, the link when I brought in all this gravel, but it's like a 14 to 16 inch uh, gravel base. I dug out all of the uh, organic roots and all that stuff. We got rid of all that. Built it all up with gravel to match the uh, existing pad and compacted it in the middle of bringing it in and so it's a good solid base um, and I'm gonna go with five inches. I know that's pretty thick but it's gonna be holding a lot of weight and I just figured you know why not. Um, also I've got the uh, concrete mesh panels in there, the wire mesh, so uh, as I pour I'll reach in and pull that up so I can get it suspended inside the concrete. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Let's uh, let's get started. Here we go. I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse, and uh, if I have any kind of breakthrough moments, I'll either slow you back down or I'll voice over. But I got a lot of work to do, and it's just me today until 2:30. When my, uh, not even probably my son doesn't get home till five, and my daughter gets home at three, and my wife maybe four. So it's pretty much just me all day. So uh, either way, that's what happens when you do stuff like this during the week. So everybody's at work. What are you gonna do? All right. Well, let's get uh, sped up, and we'll go from there. Here we go. All right, guys, so uh, what seemed to work out the best for me was uh, starting with at least like half of the water inside the mixer before I even poured any bags in. That way it, uh, all the concrete doesn't stick to the back of the, the mixer itself. Uh, one time along the way I had not enough water and it was a real pain to get all the clumped up stuff that was stuck in the bottom to get it to release from the bottom. By the time I did, I had, I don't know, probably two bags extras worth of water in there, so then... I ended up throwing a couple more bags in. Uh, as it worked out, I was starting with about six bags and then uh, five gallons of water and mixing it and just keeping an eye on it until I got the consistency I was looking for. And it ended up being uh, usually about seven bags. Towards the end, uh, I was rinsing down the mixer in between loads so that I could keep it all clean because if I'd have returned it with concrete stuck all over the place, it would have cost me extra money to have it clean. So. Um, I was washing it down and in that process it kind of added an extra water um, the last I don't know five or six loads or batches I guess were uh, ended up being eight eight to nine bag batches um, but it worked out pretty good I mean the wheelbarrow my wheelbarrow is a little too tall to dump easily into the uh, wheelbarrow out of the mixer but I just poured you know a third of it plus it was really heavy anyways I don't think that little wheelbarrow was going to handle much more weight so I just poured in two or three batches into the wheelbarrow and then dumped it and kept moving. Um, you can see in the video where it was like a steady rain. Um, it didn't, as far as I see right now, uh, it hasn't really affected the concrete. It's all curing and turning white and doing its thing. So I, I think I did all right with as far as weather went. Um, at the tail end, it finally did clear off. So I could do all the finish work and not have to fight the rain.
All right, guys. Well, I had to go uh, take a little break because I got rained out. If you don't notice the wardrobe change here, uh, it was like a steady mist for I don't know an hour or so. So I was soaking wet. It's muggy out anyway. I was been sweating, so it was a good opportunity to get out of some wet clothes and start over. Uh, at some point, the camera turned off, um, unfortunately. So this is what I've gotten done so far. I'm just about halfway, and I'd say for being a complete uh, newbie at this I'm doing all right so it's not too tough it would be nice to have an extra set of hands to throw some bags of concrete I think I'll have lifted 6,000 pounds or so by the time the end of the day comes but oh well poor me right so uh, it's going pretty good I don't know if this rain's going to kind of screw me up or not but um, it just rained pretty hard uh, for 15 minutes or so so I kind of had to make a run for it there's some standing water on top here but there's no like dimples or anything so i guess i'm probably okay hopefully in the, the tent or the hourly uh it doesn't show any rain believe it or not but because i'm doing concrete it's got to rain that's just the way it goes so uh but i'm gonna put you guys back on time lapse and hopefully this time i'll pay attention a little better and if the camera turns off i'll get a new battery so here we go so it's kind of hard to see on the camera with the, the difference in the grade change but the uh, end of the original concrete pad where the mixer is sitting, that concrete's probably about a foot or maybe 13 inches uh, thick. That's all extra concrete that they had in the truck when they poured the floor for the house. So there was no form here. There was no nothing. We weren't really ready to pour that there. It just kind of it kind of came out of necessity more than anything. That way I could at least have some kind of usable concrete pad out of the extra concrete that I had to buy when they did the house. So. Um, where the two come together it's it's just that's about where the posts are going to be set for the uh, the roof structure um, so I I'm going to use two different posts um, supports here you'll see me in a second I'll start setting the ones um, at the far end they've got five inches of rebar in the bottom of them and those you can set right in the wet concrete and uh, the concrete you know cures around them and holds them in um, as up towards the seam there I wanted to use the same ones but there's no real way if I had to drill the hole to accommodate the rebar it, basically the rebar would just be sitting inside of a hole it wouldn't really be held into the concrete so I decided to go with a different type that uh, are attached directly to the concrete with like lags and I'll put those in later here but not not in this video I'm just that's my plan here so but I'm doing my best the concrete kind of got set up a little faster than I realized it was setting up, so I wanted to make sure I got these things in and square and plumb as level as the best that I could. And uh, during that process, I decided to try my hand at the edger. Um, the edging tool that I bought, it's just like a half inch uh, round edging tool, and it works out okay. Uh, it takes some finesse work for sure, but the, you know I'm sure the more I used it, the better I would get at it. In the beginning, I was using it, and oh, there you go. I just dumped that pile of concrete into the on the pad there. So when I was cleaning that off, I ended up getting way too much water in the concrete that I'd already poured. I didn't realize I was doing it when I was spraying it down. So uh, you'll see in a second, I'll pull that scrape board back, and I try to mix in the water that's in there, but it... It turned a soup on me pretty bad so I mixed the next load kind of dry in hopes that it would absorb it. Um, it, it it mixed in a little bit it wasn't really that fantastic I wish I hadn't have done that but I don't think it really hurt anything other than it affected how long it took to cure that end but uh, as I pulled the screep board back I'm trying to pull the water back and I'll let it run off the top there but see me run the broom over the top, just kind of get a broom finish. Um, that came out good, just a little texture. Not that it's really going to be any kind of slip hazard. There'll be pallets over the top of it anyhow. And then I just run the edger. Uh, this is my first go around with the edger. I did a little bit in the beginning. The, if the concrete was wet, it was. I was having trouble. I was gouging it up pretty bad. And um, so I would. I ran it over it. Just kind of got the basic form of it. And then I came back a little while later as it set up and knocked off any high spots or any kind of lumps or anything that I ended up with. 
Uh, I'm not sure that you know the normal process, but that's how it worked out pretty good for me. This is uh, my last batch of concrete that I'm mixing up and I was trying to keep it on the smaller side. I wasn't really sure how much I was going to need, but I knew it wasn't going to be like the full seven or eight bag um, mixer load, but I got a little carried away with the water when I was mixing it or when I was rinsing out the mixer itself and then so it ended up being seven bags, uh, which was right around two or so too many. The wheelbarrow was pretty full once I got done, but I just dumped that in the yard and let it cure up and I'll... I'll pick it up with the tractor later on and go put it out in the woods someplace that I got a low spot or something. But uh, as it turned out, I ended up using uh, 71 bags total. So, and it took me right around five hours, uh, start to finish, to get all the concrete poured. And I, that doesn't include the finish work because I still had to uh, let that this last little bit set up. And that, and that all happened while I was cleaning up the equipment and stuff like that. But I didn't think five hours by myself was too awful bad to get uh, the 71 bags um, in and mixed and finished off or at least poured anyhow. So if, uh, hopefully I slowed this thing back down, but uh, that's it. It's all done, kind of. Um, it's pretty wet. I think I'm gonna run that um, screep board back down to where I started. Try to take all that liquid and bring it this way maybe. Um, and then I hit the top of it with the hose like a dummy so there's a bunch of pock marks in it so hopefully I can fix that with what's that little bit of stuff that's gonna slide back this way and then that's gonna be it for a little bit so let's get to that I guess as I was finishing that and uh, pulling that street board back towards the, the center uh, you'll see me trowel it on the one side right here and then I forgot to do the other side as I got up and just kind of got carried away and then so there's a ridge on the edge of the concrete right there that you'll see here in a minute it's pretty flat considering a guy like me did it there's definitely a high spot right there in the center maybe I can hit that up real fast all right guys that's the concrete all done so I don't know uh, I didn't get a lot of a lot of footage, actually any really, of the finishing project or process once I uh, dumped that last little bit out and got it all smoothed out. Uh, I was kind of crunching for time, trying to make sure I had enough time to get the equipment cleaned and get it back to the uh, rental place, which I did. See, it's gone, so that's good. That didn't cost me any more money to have that for another day. So, uh, pretty intimidating um, DIY project, I'd say, but 
once I got into it and kind of got in a routine, it wasn't too bad. So I definitely recommend if you guys are, you got a little concrete project like that and you want to tackle it yourself, uh, go on YouTube, watch a bunch of videos, and you'll be an expert just like me. Just kidding. I'm not really an expert, but courtesy of YouTube, that's where I, I mean, without all the information out there, I wouldn't even have tried it. But uh, I'm sure I saved myself probably, I bet a thousand bucks or better, maybe 1500 um, bucks. It was uh, all said, even with the gravel and the 24 bags of extra concrete over my shoulder that I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with those. So, um, yeah, that, so the way that worked out, uh, I needed 82 bags, where I thought I needed 82 bags. According to the internet, I needed 82 bags, and that was inaccurate. I only used 71. Um, but either way, I ordered 95 because the uh, my local building supply store, it's free delivery after $500. So uh, I figured I may as well get something for the money instead of paying for delivery. So I just bought some extra bags of concrete, and uh, I thought I'd have you know a handful left over. I didn't expect to have 24 left. So I'm not sure if they'll take them back. If not, then I'll have to get someplace dry to keep them, and I'll have to come up with another concrete project for the uh, next year maybe. But either way i don't even even with the extra bags over there without taking them back i'm not into it and the rental of the equipment uh, i had to buy a couple of trowels i bought the edger and i'm still it was about 800 bucks all into this so that's not too bad i don't think uh five inch slab i don't know i tried to get a couple estimates to be honest with you and uh i don't know how it is in your part of the country but the the contractors don't want to do little jobs like this because it doesn't make enough money for them and they just kind of don't call you back they say they're going to show up don't show up then they say they're going to show up again and don't show up and then i just got sick of that because i thought i would get my lean to done too because that's only gravel inside there but i think maybe i'll just do that myself um maybe next year so i don't think i'll get the uh wood shed up this year and I think that's probably unrealistic at this point, but uh, at least now I've got the concrete. I can get my pallets up here in another week or so, let everything cure up, and uh, I can start moving my firewood up here. So and that'll be great, because if uh, I'll probably light the boiler sometime around second week in October, depending on the weather. So either way, I appreciate you guys spending the day with me, well, spending some time with me while I uh, made some concrete work over there. So. Uh, if you're into this kind of stuff, please hit the like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and until next time, get outdoors and do something you love.